Hello, everybody. Pastor Boyle coming to you from Revival Studios here with Greg Cameron, Scott Campbell, and then back behind the camera, manning the board, we got Garrett McWilliams and Brother Sean Pizak. And uh, we're here with another episode of What Sayeth the Scriptures. Uh, but this one is a little bit unique and special to us as we did one like this last year. And it's always a special time. This will be a year in review, closing out last year, 2022, looking forward to 2023. And we're revealing the theme for 2023. And you can probably already see it on the screen. Everybody's been wondering what it's going to be. And the theme for this year, for 2023, is I will praise him amen and so we're really looking forward to it. we're gonna be talking about that we're gonna be going over the church calendar here for just a little bit uh but let's before we jump into the year of 2023 let's look back on 2022 and our theme was i will go exactly i will go and we encouraged our church people our members to do things that they maybe have not done before um Brother Scott, remember last year we were having Vision Sunday and we came up with all these formulas that if just two talkers or rather two silent partners became talkers, it would exponentially change our projected numbers and doors we could knock. Yep. And I mean, describe what the last year looked like. Did we get our two? What what, what did it look like? I, I'm I'm certain we did. I don't <laughs> know the exact, uh, you know, increase, but I'll tell you that. Uh, we had families last year that moved. A, a brother Pizak has brought his family from Illinois, and uh, the Castle family joining us. Uh, and you know, to watch uh, them as a family go soul winning, you know, and grow as soul winners, and do exactly what we were talking about. It just it magnified the blessings that God has been you know, sending our way mm -hmm. and that, you know, you see somebody, they, they start as a silent partner, which was part of that equation. Right. You know, because if you have two people that are talkers uh, and they're going together, well, if you're able to split them up by adding two silent partners now into the mix, now you can knock two doors simultaneously. And that's, that's where you start. And then as the silent partners grow and they are now interested in becoming a talker because now they've had the experience and the training that came along with just going with that talker, they become a talker. Mm -hmm. You add more silent partners into the mix and now you're knocking uh, four doors simultaneously. And uh, of course, you know, when that happens, uh, you know, you, you you can't guarantee that people are going to receive the gospel message and get saved. But if nothing changes and, and the reception of the, the people on, on the end of the convert stays the same, well, if you put more soul winners out there and you knock more doors, then you're probably going to see more people get saved. And that's what we saw as a result. And we're... we're we're just super happy with that. And it's yeah. exactly what we were talking about in the beginning of the year. 2022 was our best year ever for Revival Baptist Church as far as baptisms, mm -hmm. church attendance, number of soul winners that committed to go out weekly. And if you don't know what soul winning is, stay tuned. We're going to be talking yeah. about that just a little bit. But people who never knew what soul winning was started to be, go in and just be in a silent partner, meaning just watching someone else do the work while they're just the partner. Uh, and then we had many more than two. We had yeah. multiple. I mean, we our our average uh, uh, of soul winners uh, increased remarkably. So it's no wonder we closed out the 2022 year with beating our best year ever in all areas of of numbers. Yeah, and for me, one way to kind of gauge that is knowing now that as as the the guy that kind of puts the maps together for our soul winning marathons and things like that. I have to pick bigger areas now than I ever did before <laughs> right. because I'm going to run out of area and you know, we want to go for a certain amount of time. So if I, if I make the, the, the area to cover too small, we'll be done in 30 minutes, right? You know, as compared to last year, the year before, you know, I know that those maps that I had right. printed last year and the year before would not work for us right now. Mm -hmm. That's because our group has grown and we have more people out. So where we used to send, 
you know, three people to a door. Well, those three people have split up now and it's now back to two. Right. Because we don't have two silent partners anymore. We're down to one. And that mm-hmm. silent partner has turned into a talker and took the other person Amen. with them. And now we need bigger areas because we cover more ground Amen. in the same amount of time. Amen. We're going to be talking about that here in just a little bit. Before we do, we got really big news. Our logo, our church logo has been refreshed and revised. And here it is, our new logo. You say, What's the difference? <laughs> it's a huge difference. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see it. <laughs> I mean, so I, I I have the old logo to compare it to. Garrett, can you show the old logo? See if you can see the difference. See the old logo. Now go back. Hit the back button. There's the new wow. one. You see the difference? Much the, better. The Revival Baptist, the letter A in Revival, the A encroaches into the V and L, and it just pops. So yeah. that is something new for the 2023 year. Oh, That's important good. stuff. You, it, know, you it, got it. You got to go over those kind of things. You, you, got, know? you got to. I figured right. if I didn't tell anybody, baby, nobody would notice. And boy, that'd be horrible. <laughs> why, why put all the work in if nobody's going to notice, right? <laughs> but we're going to, our new tracks coming out, we'll have that logo. We have t shirts coming out on Sunday with that logo and then our theme on the back. So I'm yeah. excited about that. So that's the new logo comparing to the old logo. Uh, but then what we're here today to talk about is the 2023 calendar Man. for Revival Baptist Church. And it's available on our website. If you go to revivalbaptistorlando.com and you click the calendar link, it'll take you right to this. The very page I'm holding, you can have and print it out, put it on your calendar or your refrigerator. Pray for us if you can't join us. But the the point of this episode is to show you what God is doing at Revival Baptist Church and then encourage you to come and join us for one of the events or any of the events, all the events, yeah. or Maybe talk to your pastor if you're part of a local church and see if you can start doing some of these events in your area, especially the soul winning events and things of that sort. So we're just going to kind of just open the doors of Revival Baptist Church, walk you through what our church will look like for the 2023 year. And the first thing on the list, if you'll notice on our calendars, there's a lot of soul winning scheduled. Now on the calendars, we don't have our weekly soul winning We just have the monthly soul winning marathons listed. And what that is, is once a month, we will host a, what we call a soul winning marathon. And soul winning is just basically taking the Bible pattern for uh, preaching the gospel. And I've got a couple verses. I don't know if you have any that you wanted to turn to, but the the one that the, 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 the most popular one would be Acts 20, 20. It says, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and taught you publicly and from house to house. And of course, we know Jesus Christ sent out disciples to go preach the gospel. Uh, The lost is not commanded to come to church. The church is commanded to go to the lost. And somewhere along the lines, Mm -hmm. the church stopped preaching doctrine and became just like this gospel preaching machine and just bringing the lost in, inviting the lost. And every week it's preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel. And then they don't have to go soul winning all week long. But then we have a problem. One, the lost aren't coming to church. And two, we have a whole generation of Christians who don't know doctrine because every week they've just heard the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. And so a proper understanding of what a church is, the church is for the believers. Yeah. Amen. We're to gather, leave the world, shut those doors, open up our Bibles and sing our praises to God and and learn doctrine, deep things of right. God, so that we can go outside those doors and preach the gospel. And when it comes to evangelizing, the role of the church in evangelizing is to teach people how to do it and to send them out to do it right and to encourage them to keep on going Mm -hmm. soul winning because that's the grind is and 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 that's really one of our primary uh, responsibilities as a christian is to preach the gospel to every creature that's the commission that was given unto us as disciples and followers of christ he said follow me and i'll make you fishers of men and that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing and the function of the church is I believe what we're doing here in that we are setting times. We're we're figuring out where to meet. We're figuring out what doors we want to knock as a church 
and then the responsibility of the the follower of Christ is to show up and go and 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 actually do the work by knocking Amen. on the door and preaching the gospel. So brother Scott here is well actually you, you've got several group leaders. Greg's a group leader. You lead which uh, Solwood area? So it's in Polk County. Polk County, Lake Wales, the the yep. redneck part of our yeah. team. Look, Amen. That's his home. I, that's his home ter- turf. That's right. And that's what we that's what we're seeking to accomplish by splitting up the mm-hmm. and having those separate times and then you you're a group leader brother garrett's a group mm-hmm. leader back there and we have six different teams that are going out that's another increase from last year last year we had four weekly teams meeting up uh, all different areas right. we have now six different teams meeting yeah. up all the way from tampa we have the orlando area we have up by my place in leesburg right. down polk county sebring and now we're starting arcadia that goes back to the call so, from vision sunday right to you know to increase to to do more in 2022 and you know to give more of our time and as a result of that you ended up with two more soul winning times more people going soul winning on those saturdays and and just to kind of give you a quick understanding of how it's kind of evolved to where we are today is in our maybe in our first year maybe even into the second year now we're coming on year number five so right uh we were meeting here on saturdays for a long time in that in that beginning and the way that our and which for a lot of churches would probably work out and for most churches i wouldn't think that you would have to do it the way that we do it uh for the reason that we 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 split up on saturdays and i'll explain that but because we have so many people that travel such a long distance to come to church you know we have people that live an hour north of the church an hour south of the church west and west and in 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 all directions Mm -hmm. so when we were meeting at the church on those saturdays in the beginning we weren't getting the the turnout that we wanted to see and part of what we figured was maybe it's just too far to come and and drive on a saturday to spend an hour soul winning and then go home what if we could figure out a way to make it more convenient for people that live an hour away? So we decided let's have soul winning times an hour away from the church on Amen. Saturday. And it actually it actually is successful now in, in bringing more people into that Saturday soul winning time because now we have groups in uh, you know north of the church, east of the church, west and south. And now even in Tampa, which right. is, is, is an hour and a half away, but we do have people that live in Tampa. So we've encouraged them, hey, just start your own time and, and 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 manage it. We've we've kind of given you the 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 kind of uh, the the training on how to do it that we found works and they've kind of emulated that pattern and started their own times. And now we have soul winning times. Uh, six times on Saturday right. instead of one time on Saturday. And then, of course, we go soul winning on Sundays between services. And that's been As something we've from done here. from day one. Mm-hmm. We've done that, you know, from from church. Everybody's here. Right. Most people spend the whole day here. We go soul winning between church services. But then we love meeting that one Saturday a month. Where yeah, we, I was going to say that. Yeah. This is where the – so Brother Scott, he's the guy that heads up the maps. He's the guy that heads up pretty much the, the soul winning department of Revival Baptist Church. And so we we have those weekly Saturday times. So let's say you're in Tampa. I'm over here two hours away. He's down here south an hour. We got six different locations that the, the local teams meet up. So now you're driving 20 minutes to go soul winning. And you're hitting a we're hitting a big footprint of, of real estate here in Florida right. knocking doors. But then sometimes some of those groups, like, you know, they the, they can be smaller. There might just be three or four soul winners that might meet up in one group. Uh, some groups are larger. There's 15, 20 that show up and others are smaller with two or three. Mm-hmm. And it might get a little discouraging, two or three people meeting in, let's say, Tampa or, you know, Polk County or something. So what we created was the soul winning marathons where once a month, the whole church, all six groups will meet at one of those locations. Mm-hmm. And now that group of three people week in and week out going soul winning will have the entire soul winning team meet up at their location. So we'll all drive to Tampa or Polk County, yeah. or Orlando, and we have uh, uh, donuts and coffee. Right. And it's 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 a way to support that local group. Right. You know, and uh, and Greg, you might be able to talk about this a little bit, but what one thing I've noticed with the 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 different teams, if you will, 
is it kind of creates this uh these different tiers of accountability mm -hmm. within you know the 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 people that live in that local area because the soul winning time the place to meet is usually like 15 20 minutes away or something like that and then you know i know that it, you know if if i'm only 15 minutes away from the soul winning time and i don't really have anything else going on it kind of makes me think like well it's only 15 minutes away i should probably just you know give that hour up or that whatever that time is even on the day where you don't feel like going, but what do you think about that? How, how have you seen it kind of, cause then you as the leader, you have a, a an accountability then to the, to the bigger picture as well. Right. Right. Yeah. And so the way it's worked out for us is we have several different texting groups where I can send mass texts out to everybody in my group and not everybody in my group shows up and some people float which I think is really cool. Yeah. So sometimes even we'll be just, it'll be just me and brother Caleb and that's all I think that's coming, but there's other people that are getting these texts and then, you know, someone else will just show up in my group and it's just, it'll be a shot in the arm. I mean, most of the time I don't really need the shot in the arm because I've been doing it long enough to know the people are, you know, they're hit and miss, mm -hmm. but some people who are just learning to soul win, they're like, this is what we're supposed to be doing. And they're on fire. And they're like, why is there only two or four people? And then all of a sudden a big group comes up. They're like, man, that's yeah. awesome. We're charging. For and it. it also puts more people in leadership, mm -hmm. right? Because originally it was just me like, you know, in charge right. of the whole thing. Accountability. And that, yeah. And now, you know, you can see that any any one of us knows how to do the the whole thing now it's like it's all interchangeable yeah. anybody you know that that's been a leader could be a leader in a different place or at a different level and all these different things because it's it's really not that complicated but we but, we've got a lot to cover and soul winning is a big you can tell it's a big part of Rob Baptist church before we move on to the next subject though we have as we do the soul winning marathons and we go and encourage those small teams that go out soul winning each in all those six different locations, we're also now just organically it's coming up where we're going to be doing that for other churches as well. And one of those is in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, we have on the calendar here, I have it as uh, February uh, 27th, Monday through March 4th. In, in Mobile, Alabama, we're going to be meeting up with the local church there, and we've got already like 30 people signed up to go, and we're going to go just be a blessing to that church. Uh, be We could be soul winning partners with the people maybe in the church who've never gone, mm -hmm. and we're going to just get up, hopefully, Lord willing, get a program going that when we leave, there's still a small team going there, and then we can go back next year and give them a shot yeah. in the arm and encourage them. And then I've had two other churches reach out. Uh, saying that they're interested in doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, one out, one here in Florida, another out of state. So it's interesting that we're not even trying to do that. Uh, it's just people are seeing the system here and saying, "Hey, can you emulate that for my church?" Yeah. And the answer is absolutely yes. And the answer yes. And 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 you know, if your situation at your church is not like ours, where you're so spread out with your, you know, the, the people that that come to your church and are living an hour away and things like that, this is still a system that you can put in place even on a Sunday because we right. do the same thing on a Sunday. We have four group leaders on a Sunday that take groups and go in four different directions from the church and it accomplishes the same thing. I love watching the vans pulling out of Revival Baptist Church van loads. People are carpooling, piling in, and they're just going in all different directions. And then if you know, if you're in a group, sometimes there's three or four vehicles caravanning and we're all pulling in. And the next thing you know, the streets are being flooded with soul winners. Mm -hmm. You're just watching them go. And because the group's so large, you can hit a an oh, entire yeah. neighborhood that would take a, a one team of soul winners a long time, months. We're hitting them in a half hour knocking and we're not just blitzing we're actually knocking on the door we're offering to show them the bible way to heaven and that's what soul winning is and another part of our soul winning program is the soul winning conference that takes place during labor day weekend this is a big deal we partner with abiding word baptist church in jacksonville which is now an independent work under pastor yeah. theo matthews leadership and that is uh where is it on the calendar i have it september as second September 2nd is when it's on Saturday, September 2nd, the soul winning conference, and then it'll bleed into the Sunday service. It'll be themed on soul, on soul winning as well. And the, of course it's labor day and we focus on the labor of the heart Amen. that, that really does matter. 
but that's that's there's a lot covered there with the soul winning check out our calendar reach out to us if you're interested in, in us coming your way or you coming our way we want to see more soul winners out there preaching the gospel the good news Amen. Um, now moving on once a month we also have on the calendar you'll see our creation class with none other than greg cameron he's <laughs> the one teaching the creation class tell us a little bit how that got started this you did it you last year was the first year we're continuing that into 2023 what is that and how did it get started so yeah we i mean we've been we were talking about you know just possibly starting something up just doing something for the kids and and really for the grown-ups as well just something to put god the marvelous wonders of god's creation before the eyes of the children and making making it alive for them making it something experiential so they can say oh wow god made that and, and it's just so cool look what god has done and you know and kind of because you know, when you live for God, the, the world's always trying to steal the attention of the kids. And wow, there's all these videos of these people doing these amazing things and you could get lost in all that. But who cares what people can do if they can shoot a, a hoop or do whatever? Just look outside, a bird that flies by or the sun shining or the clouds. And you just look at that and you're amazed. You're uh, just enamored by the wonders of God's creation. And that's kind of the vision that I've had. And I've wanted to just glorify God through his creation. Yeah. Hebrews 11 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good report through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen uh so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear and so the bible tells us clearly that we accept creation the fact that god is our creator a six literal day young earth creation we accept that by faith and so we want to instill that faith in the children it's always fun you'll see it on our church calendar it's the last wednesday of every month you'll walk in and you'll see science gadgets you'll see experiments mm -hmm. and there's always the mystery box you never know what's in that mystery box and the kids love it and not just the kids it's for all ages like right brother greg he's a man of few words but when he does speak <laughs> he has some knowledge in there. Let me tell you yeah. that. And it's neat just to unleash him and see this yeah. from a science perspective, uh, whatever it is, whether it's air, what are some of the categories you cover? So we've covered airs, we've covered creeping things, you know, we've covered plants, we've covered rocks and minerals. I mean, we've covered a, a lot of broad subjects and, and I like to bring as much stuff in things mm -hmm. kids can pick up, they can touch. You never know what's going to happen. There's could be water squirting everywhere. There could be, you know, air blowing things, right. scaring kids. Bugs running around. Bugs <laughs> running around on people's heads. Things yeah. exploding. We just never know what's going to happen. And good science is good. Amen. Good science. I've, I've, I've known people in the past that want to stay completely away from science because of the bad science that's so so popular. Falsely so, so common. Yeah. It, it, and that's what the Bible says to avoid the oppositions of science falsely so called but good science is good mm -hmm. right right it, and and you know it's a blessing to see that that you know when you can do these experiments and things like that and then you look at your bible and you're like that's cool yeah. that right. is cool and when yeah. and true science lines up with the bible Amen. when science is 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 true and done right it lines up with the Bible yeah. every time, and that's really and, cool. And what I like to do in those classes is not just show the cool science, because it is cool, yeah. but science by itself doesn't really matter to me. It's when I can take the Bible and, and the, right. I actually learn a principle about God and his characteristics or how we should act as Christians. We could tie it into the Bible, and the kids walk away mm -hmm. with this thing they saw that was so amazing, but then they got a truth from the Bible, right. and they can yeah. put it together. Something that I think will stay and it's, with them. It's really important, too, for, it's especially for our kids, and we'll talk a little bit about this as we move along, but, you know, growing up nowadays, you're you're out of touch with God's creation. You know, you go to the store, you buy a steak. You know, you go to the store, you buy vegetables off the shelf or whatever, right? You're out of touch with, with where it comes, what, from. Where it comes right. from, how it got there. You don't know. And then the Bible's full of, of uh, you know, these analogies where God uses these, these uh, processes, you know, especially in farming and harvesting agriculture, and, yeah. and agriculture and things like that 
that we would have no idea what he's talking about. So part of the creation class, you know, you can't change, you know, the, the, the modern lifestyle, right, you know, to a point. But if you can teach them, you know, and give them a visualization on a lot of these things, then when they go to the Bible, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. And that's part of it, too. Yeah. Is highlighting these these uh, these these processes, showing the scientifically, making it fun, showing how cool it is, and then giving them everybody a visual so that when they go back to their Bible, they have that that uh, vis- visualization in their mind. Or- right, and also what we're doing, you know, remember we're family integrated at Revival Baptist Church, right. which means we do not split the family up and send the, all the little kids out. And they're sitting there hearing, you know, T Bone Steak. Uh, preaching every week amen and people say oh how are the little kids getting it you'd be amazed Mm -hmm. at the bible that little toddlers are running around knowing even watching toddlers they watched our documentary we made last year another another hallmark of 2022 a world within reach after we watched that documentary as a church the little i mean barely big enough to walk or five walking around with tracks knocking on the bathroom doors and tagging doors any door in this church had a track in it by the little <laughs> toddlers and then they were pretending to be talkers and silent and nobody yeah, asked man. them to do that they're learning and they're learning doctrine yeah. they're learning hymns but we want to also you know have a time where we can just kind of loosen the tie and be silly and have some science project yeah. and and let them know that this bible has the answers to life because what happens is if if we never teach them the word of God and how that there is a creator, he made us, he knows best, this is not by accident, the world, they're going to just out talk us and they're going to give answers to where we may, you know, where we've not, we failed on our end and they're going to go and be like, well, dumb Christianity or smart professor. Well, how about this? When we walk out of the science class, it's like, wow, God is amazing. Amen. How did he make this creature? Amen. How did, and it just I mean, it does that for me. What do you think that's doing for the little kid mm-hmm. yep. as they're growing up learning that there is a creator? So I, I really appreciate that. I'm glad to see this is still on the calendar. He hasn't run out of knowledge. He's still <laughs> going to go forward with that. Another monthly event at our church. This is just a fun one. This is one I included on here is our Family Favorites Fellowship. And that is the last Wednesday of every month as well. And this started at Revival Survival. When we're out mm. there, that's a, a primitive survival trip of guys that we have that happens now every other year. We've changed it up a little bit. We'll see in a little bit. But we're starving out there for three days. You gotta you can only bring eat whatever you catch. You can't bring any food. You can't bring any fishing poles. You can't bring any hunting equipment. You just gotta figure out how to catch stuff and you pretty, talk about fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you talk about, I mean, at that point in life. Ants look appetizing. <laughs> Little grub worms are like, boy, that sure does look good. Cockroaches fall in my life. <laughs> but anyway, we were sitting around day two or three, and we're just like, oh, man. We start talking about food. And then, you know, our favorite food started. My favorite cereal, my favorite candy, my favorite. And so I found out through that conversation, we have a lot of interesting favorites. So that started, well, let's yeah. have a fellowship once a month where it's themed. Bring your favorite cookies. Bring your favorite cereal. And we'll have cereal and milk. And bring your favorite whatever it might be. And so the Family Favorites Fellowship. I think it's kind of neat. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's part of being in a family. Yeah, part of, yeah, that's part of the 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 key component to our church is having a tight-knit group. Yeah. Having a tight-knit family unit at home. And then also a tight knit church family at church. We want our we want our kids to spend time with uh, the family, and then also the church family. That's where we want to spend our time in fellowship. Amen. If you fellowship with the world, you're going to act and talk and sound and do the things of the world. If you spend time around people that are interested in serving God then that's what you're going to talk about. That's what you're going to want to do. That's going to be your motivation. And it is it is key. So that's why we have a lot of these, these mm-hmm. fellowships and things like that. That's our goal. And that's another reason. reason you need to be part of a local church. Yes. You know, watching it on the internet is fine, but it's not the same thing. And, you know, these are things we do, but every local church has some kind of fellowship. And right. you need to be part of that. You need, you need to be able to have a brother and sister in Christ 
that you fellowship with and hold each other accountable. Moving on, uh, in February, we're only in February, but hey, don't <laughs> worry. It's going to pick up fast. I'm watching the clock. Don't skip to the end, all right? February, we have our couples conference or couples dinner. Again, highlighting the relationships of the husband and wife. And this is on Friday at the uh, February 10th at 7 p.m. here at the church. We cater a dinner in. We'll have uh, preaching that night. We'll have games and prizes. The teenagers are going to be, you know, black and white aprons serving the the couples, the parents, or those dating. And it's just, it's a fun time. I always look forward to it. Last year, well, the previous two years, Pastor Grayson Fritz was our speaker uh, does a phenomenal job. Yeah, amen. amen. I love Pastor Fritz and hearing him preach. And so I'm looking forward to it this year, February 10th. And then uh, we have quarterly, we have organized youth activities. And Brother amen. Scott, take off your soul winning hat. You're now the leader of the youth department. <laughs> and I am. And he's going to, he's and the guy that heads up our youth let activities. Me, let me just say this because I've had to a answer questions on our uh, about youth activities and youth groups. Uh, because I think the model that was, is typically uh, used in a lot of churches is a bad model. Yeah. And, and a lot of people see the product of, you know, and here's the problem. It's separating the children from the family is, is what a lot of churches do all day on Sunday, Sunday school, and then, you know, church service, they're, they're missing from church service. They're not sitting with their parents. Even midweek services, they have those Awana programs or yeah. Kings Kids. And right. They're just And then there are a lot of churches, too, that will have the kids in for the song service. And then as soon as the preacher gets up to preach, they're like, okay, kids, you Go can Go color your now. coloring sheets. Yeah. And they send all <laughs> the kids out of the church. Right. And they don't have church. And then, you know, with their youth group, it's like parents just drop off your kids like we're having some worldly daycare or something yeah. or some camp or something like that. That is not what we're doing, and that is not what we want to do at Revival Baptist Church. We encourage uh, f families to homeschool their children. Amen. We don't want, you know, you to drop your kid off here, and then we teach them whatever we think they need to know. We want to encourage you to teach them at home, and our our youth activity is just another way to uh, have fellowship, but put the emphasis on our young folks. Right. And I think that's a part of the responsibility that we have as as the church and, right. and as the leaders of the church. And I want to just, in explaining that just briefly so that we can move on, I want to read uh, our, our theme, our verse. theme yes. verse for our youth group activity. Amen. But I want to read uh, just a few verses to get a little bit of the context Amen. so that we can understand it. So in Psalm 144, our verse for our youth group is verse number 12. But I want to read from verse number 9. It says, I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings, Will I sing praises unto thee? And that's going to go hand in hand with our theme for 2023, Amen. right? The So this is a leader looking out at his congregation, his people, all right? He, he personally wants to sing praises unto God. So he's going to make some requests unto the Lord here in the next couple verses. But ultimately, in verse number 12, he's not only going to set this goal for himself, but he's going to want to... Uh, instill this in the people as well and specifically the generation that's coming up behind them so that's the theme he wants to sing um, praises unto god in verse number 10 he says it is he that giveth salvation unto kings who delivereth david his servant from the hurtful sword rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity, yeah. and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Mm -hmm. So David himself wants to be separated from the, the the vanity of the world and the strange children that don't know God that would tear him away from singing praises unto God and start singing praises of the worldly things and the, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of this life. That's what the world and the strange children are concerned with. Not praising God, but David has set the goal to, for him to praise God, but not only himself, but look at what he says in verse number 12. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. So the reason why he wants to put himself in this position where he's rid him, that he's, he's prayed to God that God would rid him of the strange children 
and whose mouths speak of vanity and the right hand of falsehood. He hates every false way. He wants to embrace the truth and worship God in spirit and in truth so that he can teach his children. Right. Yeah. Be an example under the generation that's going to come up behind him so that they may, the sons may be plants grown up in their youth. Mm. So we're teaching them how to be men in their youth. Amen. Men that praise God, just like we want to praise God. We want to teach our sons how to live a life praising the Lord yeah. and glorifying God. And we want our daughters to be as cornerstones when they grow up and they're young ladies. Polished. Polished. Yes. After the similitude of a palace. Amen. Pure, godly Amen. women that know what their role is to be as a godly woman Amen. in this life, as a wife to a husband and as a mother to children, Amen. as a servant of the Lord. We Amen. want them to know that before they get there. Right. We don't want them to figure it out later. We want to teach it to them as they grow up. We have to be in a certain position. But the youth group is that. Yeah. It's an effort on the, mm -hmm. the, the uh, by the church to invest help, help aid yeah. and invest in it yeah. doesn't replace what the parents are supposed to do at home right so it says they're that tender plant i just yeah. think of that that little plant that starts off as a seed and you're you're tying it to the little the guide stick and you can't tie it too tight you're you know you don't want to break the leaves mm -hmm. but that's going to be a mighty plant a mighty tree one day but right now we're guiding that yeah we're, we're pointing the right direction and so sometimes people have a hard time you know, when they see Revival Baptist Church, you know, we'll do some silly activities with the teens. We'll do some silly experiments with the science side. But what they don't understand is in the setting of our church where it's family integrated, you know, I'm the pastor, but I'm also the youth pastor. I'm also the Sunday school teacher. I'm also yeah. the act. There, we don't have those departments, if that makes sense. So every, there's going to be times where, you know, we loosen the tie. Right. And we're a little silly. We're playing games. We're, you know, stuffing marshmallows in our mouth. And people will be like, that doesn't look very We're supposed squirrel, to be you know? raising our children <laughs> in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Right. And what do kids want to do? They want to have fun. And let me just say this. Our youth group is not, we're not following the pattern of, what's typical out there in that what's making us different is that we are not separating the children from their parents. We're encouraging the whole family. If a family in our church has teenagers, the entire family's invited to right, the teen right. activity. Yeah. We, I, I appreciate the youth department. Well, there's a large youth department here and you know, we just come, we'll play games, just eat some pizza, preaching and singing. Right. So it'll be an evening where we can have fun, play the games, eat the pizza, but then there's always the preaching, there's always the singing, and we're encouraging the teenagers exactly. to step up and fill those roles. So I, I appreciate what God is doing. And and really the fruit of Revival Baptist Church is we're seeing young teenagers, mm. you know, they're they're coming well, to church dressed maturing. bright, polite. What teenager in our church is not serving the Lord in some capacity? And deciding for themselves that that's what they want to do with yeah. their life. Yeah, amen. So that's that's on our calendar. Come join us if you have youth. Uh, you'd be like uh, be be welcome to come and be part of that. Then we have the ladies' lunch in there around the Mother's Day time. That's always a fun time. The ladies put that together, and uh, I I assume it's good. I'm not there to verify, <laughs> and I will not be. Well, they do it every year. They so do it every year, good. and it, it's growing. They have a fun time. There's lots of photos to <laughs> to prove they had a good time. I just know this though. When when we're because we go soul winning, the guys that drop off the wives, we just kind of go out soul winning that time. It's a good time for fellowship. When we come back, there's like food everywhere still. Yeah. yeah. When the guys have a fellowship, there's no food left over yeah. when it's time for the ladies you know to come cool back. You know what's cool about that too? Being like near Mother's Day, you know, a lot of the ladies, it's it's an opportunity they bring their moms along. And right. Moms that don't typically come to church or or they've been hesitant to How come to church. How many salvation? How many salvation have they had at the ladies' lunch? Yeah. I just last year we did. Yeah. Year before yeah. that, I think like five last yeah. year or something like that. People's cousins, aunts, mothers. Yeah. Uh, who never would come to church. And it's just interesting that we can have an activity and we're still soul winners, though. Amen. Yep. And Amen. to see that take place. So that's something on the calendar. Uh, check that out. That's May 13th. And then, of course, drum roll, please, anniversary Sunday, mm. marking five years wow. at Revival Baptist <laughs> Church. And that is the Sunday of the 21st, uh, all day celebrating five years. I can't yeah. believe five years is a mouthful. Were you at the first service? I've been here for 
260 Sundays. Mm, you have them counted? <laughs> I do too. It's been <laughs> horrible. <laughs> You haven't ran me away yet. You haven't ran him away. I try. <laughs> trying and trying. Maybe by the tenth. Yeah, you came along shortly after. Yeah. Um, so long. the church started in May. I was. I yeah. I came along in July. So you've aged a lot in five years. Me? Yeah. <laughs> if you could see the photo, it was on our website for a long time. It was of him being baptized when he first came. <laughs> he didn't have his beard or anything. I tell everybody looks like a twelve-year-old boy. Mm. He did not look. Nope. This this is where it's going, right? They, well, let me say this: you didn't have any gray. Uh, well, I checked the pictures. I know I did, not but here's my story. Five years ago, I was a missionary for eight years in Romania. They never gave me gray hair. I pastored in Ohio for six years. They never gave me gray hair. I haven't even been here five years. My hair. Greg has given you gray I, hair for five years. Yeah, I know. That's where he's going with it. But but anyway, he's going to blame the whole church. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so anniversary Sunday, this is something special because I think back to five years ago when our family was just kind of lost. We didn't know where we were going to go. We just knew we wanted to serve the Lord and we didn't know what that looked like. We didn't know where we were going to land and how God miraculously opened up the building that we are still into today. We've used every corner that we can. We are already outgrowing. It's mm. it, trying to find a parking spot on Sunday is i know i mean it's it's a, it's a hard thing to do but praise god people do it they'll park at walmart Amen. they'll park at the hospital they'll walk over um but we are this building is creaking it's busting at the mm -hmm. seams but it's a miracle how we got it yeah and it is the timing of yeah. it and how it started the way revival baptist churches started we're not started from some split off of another church a lot of churches start when a church down the road splits these people get mad and come what a blessing to see people coming in for the right reasons and yeah. growing, being getting saved and baptized. And then we're it's only been five years, but I've already we've already seen people saved, baptized, married, yeah, bearing children. Yeah. And now it's like it's just like we're seeing this generation rise up and we're only five years old. Or yeah. not even five. Yeah, not even five. Yeah. And it's just neat. On the back of our yard there in the oak tree, we've already had a wedding. David and yeah. Therese, their little initials are carved in our in our oak tree in the backyard uh, at the wedding that was performed there. And now they've got a little one and another one on the way and faithful servants of God. Just a blessing to see what God's doing. Yeah, and, and can I just say this, that over the last five years, we've seen a lot of different things happen. Many, many great things happen that gets everybody excited, feels really good. But we've been through some battles and things like that, too. And I think our theme this year is not a new theme. It's not like we're starting, the, you know, I will praise him starting in 2023. But I think that's been the 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 thing that's kept us going since day number one, is that everything we try to do here as a church, it's to give glory, honor, right. and praise unto God. So whether these things are battles that we're struggling through, or really high you know, things that, that feel great, you know, uh, it all should have the same effect on us, no matter if, if, if it, from our perspective, it be good or bad, right? In that it should all be under praise of the Lord. And, uh, I, so a verse that I was thinking of as we were talking about the, the theme for 2023, and I think it's a good time to bring in that, that up and, uh, it, it, to read it, uh, is in Hebrews 13, it says, in verse 12, wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore under him without the, the camp, camp bearing man. his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit, the of, our fruit of our lips Amen. giving thanks to his name. And so if you think about the history of the church, I think that's what we've we've always tried to right. do. Whether it be great, we give praise to God. And whether it be a struggle, we're doing it for the praise of God. Right. So that we could offer that sacrifice of praise, mm -hmm. knowing that here we don't have any continuing city, but everything that motivates us should be that we have that city we know of to come and we're laying up treasure in heaven mm -hmm. by glorifying God with the life and the breath that we have. 
And yeah. it's a wonderful thing to see that through the struggles or, you know, through the good, the bad, the thick, the thin, the, the good, bad, the ugly, whatever you want to say. Here we are still doing the same thing five years later. Yeah. And those situations have not hindered us and have not. And the naysayers are watching. Yeah, They're yeah. waiting. They're like, it's not going to last. But, you know, I've been in the ministry long enough to know that if that's why you're doing something, you're not. I'm, we're not doing it for results. Mm -hmm. If 2023 is a year we shrink in attendance. We're not, the goal of Revival Baptist Church is not to grow. The goal of Revival Baptist Church is to praise the Lord. Yeah. And if he decides to grow the work, great. And he has been, and we're thankful for it. But the minute that becomes our goal, we'll change things to keep that happening. Yeah. We don't want that. We want to praise the Lord. If praising the Lord is in season, we praise the Lord. the Lord. Amen. If praising the Lord is out of season, right. praise the Lord. And, you know, in the five years, just kind of with that thought, you brought it, there were ups and downs. Yeah. But... You know, looking back on it, you know, you look back from now, you're like, wow, what a great thing. But there are people along the way that kind of bailed and thought, man, this, oh, oh. and you know, it just instant in season and out of season. Here we are only not even five years and we're looking back thinking, wow. And you not can, only that five years, but think about what also was in that five years, 2020. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm we were a baby to, church so, facing big battles in 2020. What I'm trying to say is in every situation, you can look at it from a, from the, perspective of how it makes you feel as a as a as a human or a man and a, you know from the flesh's perspective or you can look at it like no matter what happens think, so think about this 2020 comes there's a lot of you know struggles and battles and things that are fought over and should we do this or should we do that people getting mad people leaving everything like that but at the end of it all god delivered us mm-hmm and, you know, in bad situations, when things go bad and God delivers you, it's not like, oh, we, maybe we shouldn't do that again, you know, because it was a bad situation. But didn't God work a miracle? Didn't God work a great work? Mm -hmm. Don't Amen. you want to see him do another one? Amen. So let's go back. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the attitude of the three Hebrew boys standing in front of that furnace. They're like, no, God can deliver it. You throw us in there. But God. if not. Yeah, but if not. Right. You know, we're not still not going to bow. Be it known unto thee, O king. Because we will not bow. Either right? way, God's going to do something great. Mm -hmm. And you could throw us in there. God could deliver us out. If he chooses not to, you could throw us in there anyway. And it's still praising the Lord. Amen. Speaking of great, the next thing on the calendar is our Revival Missions Conference, which will be Wednesday the 7th through yeah. Sunday the 11th. And that was phenomenal. We, that was yeah. our, we do a conference every year, but last year was our first with it themed as missions. We're going to be doing that again this year. I'm looking forward to it. Um, we have several things in, re in in regards to missions on the calendar this year and bleeding into 2024. And those are a couple missions trips that are coming up. And I just want to share a little bit. I know we got a film that Brother Garrett's working on. He's almost done. <laughs> He's been almost done for a year now. and But anyway, trying to document what happens on the mission field when we go on a mission trip. Because just like people don't understand what a youth department is, they right. think it's... They go the on missions trips. Right. Send the kids off, play color and color 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 and sheets and eat pizza that's the youth department no 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 we're training young men and women right. to be godly well the same with missions it's like go to the mission field and pass out shoe boxes with you know deodorant and toothpaste no 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 we're there to preach the gospel mm -hmm. Amen. and what a blessing puerto rico yeah. has been we've mm -hmm. been this will be our years. right it'll be three on the calendar for puerto rico is uh in july the 16th through the 22nd and we leave here Sunday night after church. We fly out from Orlando. We get there late in the night. The first two years, we don't even know who's picking us up from the airport. We don't have anybody. We're just like, <laughs> we. the first year, can we kind of park here for a little bit? I don't know what time-wise, but the first year, here's how it happened. There were several people in our church with family in Puerto Rico on our prayer list. Pray for my dad. Pray for my grandma. Pray for this. They're not saved. And we just looked at each other one day and said, how hard is it to go to Puerto Rico to get on an airplane and just go knock on their door and witness to them. So we prayed about it. And last minute, we all bought tickets. We had no place. We had no budget. We had no money. All we could buy was our ticket to get there. And we said, we're going to go. We, we were already planning to sleep on the streets or in hammocks tied to coconut trees. We didn't know what we were going to do. <laughs> and we here was a how many how many were there? Eight, ten. Yeah, we had nine. Not, okay, we had nine people the first year. Right? Because it was a it, it was. was an eight passenger van yeah. and we had nine in it. <laughs> it was an eight passenger small van. We had nine. Yeah. 
people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it wasn't nine of this. No. <laughs> no. One of them wanted to eat that. <laughs> but anyway, we had it was the sweetest trip you could ever experience. We got there and come to find out the grandma of one of our church members, Brother Caleb Frazier's grandma, Grandma Irma, opened up her home and said, I'd love to have missionaries stay. We got to stay in her house and it was a tiny house. But we had a house to stay and we were excited. We were we didn't care about where we were gonna sleep. Yeah. The Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. We're like, if Jesus can do it, we can do it. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, there was a, a Pentecostal pastor who found out we were coming and said, I'll loan him my van. What? Now we have this van that leaked transmission, it leaked every fluid there is, even air. <laughs> it leaked <laughs> air out of the tires. It leaked transmission fluid, brake fluid. It leaked the fuel. It leaked oil. It leaked, I mean, everything, power steering fluid. Mm -hmm. But we had a van. We were, God did a great work. Yeah, and again, another situation where we had many, many things that we could have pointed to as an excuse not to do something. Mm -hmm. And we said, we don't care. Let let God handle all of this. Our, our job is to just, we're going to bring the Bible with us, and we're going to go to every door we can we can go to yeah. and we're going to figure it out the language wasn't even a barrier yeah the lord was the good the lord was do you remember how many us? salvations we had i don't have that 52, 52 the first year the first year so nine guys it it's there's so many funny stories that we could share forever <laughs> it was hilarious our only goal was not to go see any islands or palm trees or the beaches was preach the gospel Pre and all day long and you know we, we that. all while we were so winning Mountains, beaches, palm trees. It was a beautiful place to go, yeah. but we did the work. That's why we right. were there. And even Brother Greg doesn't speak any Spanish. Probably had the, the sweetest salvation on that, that first year. Very memorable. Yeah. You, was, you met the, the... Met the kid from... He was from Pennsylvania. And oh, we, oh yeah. we literally ended up where we really shouldn't have even or couldn't have purposely gone and it was a beautiful was, walk it was a it was a beautiful walk we like crossed some little creek and cool. we we end up at the top of this mountain and there's a, a granddad and a couple of his grandkids shooting hoops and this a, like abandoned looking basketball uh little pavilion and come to find out the granddad that day was just trying to trying to preach the gospel to his grandson and was using some of the same verses that I got mm -hmm. to use with his grandson. And it was just super incredible. And he, you know, the kid gets saved. It was a sweet time. The granddad was very emotional. He was so happy. And then, you know, later on we go to the church, we invite him to the church that night is a Wednesday night. And we're sitting there at the fellowship area before the church service starts and we're eating a little bit of snacks and drinking something. And then all of a sudden the the light kind of gets dark and there's a figure standing in the doorway. And I look up and, and there he is, is. that teenage boy and in brought church. his family. Yeah. Brought his and family there's the only church. visitors that church has probably yeah. had in years. Raccoons age. Which, yeah. <laughs> so, and you know, here we are on this mountain out in the middle of nowhere. And we're talking to this young kid who his grandfather, mm -hmm was just witnessing to he that. Re he was using Revelation, Revelation 21, 21 8. 8. That morning. morning. There's no qu so that was year one. Then year two we're like, all right, we were prepping everybody. This year two would have been 2022. It can't be that good every year, folks. Mm. You know, that was just a special year, but we're gonna go back anyway. And boy, oh boy, <laughs> I mean it got gooder if we can use that word, yeah. amen. <laughs> we had two salvations year number one. Right. We had nine people. I think we had 14 or 15 with us 14, year number two yeah. and we had 104 salvations on year number two i'm glad you remember that because i don't remember I well, it was easy for me because i just remember that it just doubled. doubled it yeah oh that is true yeah, yeah. It what, and what i mean it was like people heard our story so they're like let's go see and i'm like hey guys i'm let i'm getting ready for a letdown it can't always be like that we <laughs> felt like we felt like god was just moving us literally yeah. to a mountain you know walk over here do this and we're just and and I think, you know, God would do that every day if we were just in yeah. that mindset of, I want to go somewhere. I mean, and it was, there were was some new surprises in year number two, like the shopping mall, because we were like, no way. Don't go <laughs> winning in the shopping mall. That's never going to work. What, what was the reason we had to go to the shopping mall? It was mall? raining. It was, that's right. It was raining. So we, we didn't know like, what to do. Is, like, there anywhere, is there anywhere to go where we're not going to show up to somebody's door soaking wet? And, you know, can we make it somewhat normal? You know, and we're like, well, let's just try the shopping mall. The shopping mall. 
and we're like, hey, worst they can do is kick us out. We, we, you know, yeah. they're gonna arrest. And even us. how we ended up at the mall we went to, didn't we have to do a, some we're, yeah crazy <laughs> driving <laughs> maneuvers? <laughs> <and jumping. laughs> so we were gonna go to another mall, and then the traffic was bad. We ended up at this mall, and then wasn't it, brother Sean? Was it you that got to lead someone to the Lord mm -hmm. at that mall? Who also was going to be going to the other mall, but got detoured and distracted yeah. uh, to where the mall we and it was like they were elated that here I am at this mall getting saved and I wasn't supposed to be here and neither was the soul winner supposed right. to be here. Right. And we and just, it wasn't even the mall that we were trying to go to. It was right. A different mall. Right. Mall was yeah. by and, and here's the thing about that, too. I think we had like 50 something salvations at that mall in two days. Yeah, we went back. <laughs> we went back the next Fishing day. Was it was good. so good. Even we the security again. guards were, we they were getting saved. to them. We thought, oh, oh Derek man. got one of them saved. Yeah. And then so so when we got back to, to Florida, we, uh, we, we were like, <laughs> let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> not the same. No, it's not. Here. No, no not the same. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Only for Puerto Rico. Right. So that's Puerto Rico. Now, that is, it's special. We're going to be doing it again this year, and it's, Please, before we move on to the next trip, if you want to join us, you know, there's limited space. Yes, come join us, but don't expect the Hilton. <laughs> don't expect free meals a day. You're coming to just live the life of a, what a missionary should be doing, and that is forsaking the goods of mm -hmm. this world to go preach the gospel. And if we have a place to stay, great. If not, you know, because budget's not – if if we went – There's we, no budget. No, if we, if we had a rental car and we had a hotel – and we had meals provided, it would leave many people out and we wouldn't be able to do it. So we're like, you know what? We're just going to go and do it with the goal is not go put stamps in our passport. The goal is preach the gospel. Yeah. And so that's how that looks like at a missions trip. We're going to be doing the same thing this coming year. First time ever to Mexico. Hey. And that'll be in August um, from the 13th through the 19th. Same thing. Uh, in Mexico, though, we're going to have a little bit different setup where we're going to have a service each night. So we're going to go soul winning in the day. We will be hosting the service each night, and um, it's going to be phenomenal. You will need your passport for Mexico. You don't need it for Puerto Rico. Right. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I've never been to Mexico. Um, I don't know how receptive it is. I know that area speaks some English, um, but all of us know enough Spanish to get our way around. Um, what I did in Puerto Rico was I didn't speak enough i don't speak enough spanish to lead someone to the lord if they don't speak any english but i can't help them if they know english slightly and i just would lead someone to the lord in puerto rico if they spoke english i'd say would you follow with me and be my translator yeah. and you know how many people i led to the lord after first leading this person to the lord and they walked through the park with me or through the city and they were my vocal person for the yeah. next three hours or 20 minutes whatever they could give what a blessing yeah that was cool and i mean we couldn't even leave puerto rico without scott at the airport yeah, yeah. leading a convert to the lord from the mall yeah that did not have time Over and he the was phone. super yeah. interested and he calls during the we're get we're in the airport and here he is on the uh, talking to scott saying i want to know what you were going to show me at the mall and he bows his head and gets saved yeah while we can't even leave the country that's that's what a mission that's what missions should mm -hmm. be and, you know, um, I'm looking forward to Mexico, what yeah, that's going to be. That. We're also going to be going into, I don't have it on the calendar because it's in 2024, the Philippines, mm. January of 2024, to a King James Bible mm. Conference. Phenomenal time is going to yeah. be. They're expecting thousands of pastors from all over the country, the islands, coming in to preach about the King James Bible. Yeah. Amen. And there's Holy. a ministry there that prints King James Bibles and gives them and a hands free. them out free in the philippines yes and just so happens that the missionary that's uh a part of that ministry stopped by here one night and was telling us about the it bar, yes that's what got us uh he actually invited us to the conference and we're we're we're, super we're, we're in yeah we're it's excited. gonna be a little pricey but we're i don't want to miss it i've always wanted to go to the puerto rico or, or to the philippines mm -hmm. and i've always wanted to eat balut mm. as bad as it sounds that I, that I don't know. I don't know. Say if I, I, I want to. I do. I, I think I would. I'm intrigued by it. I'll, I'll go make a video of it. We'll post yeah. it on on the next episode after that. So watch 2024 episode whenever that comes out. Moving on, just like we do a ladies' luncheon at Father's Day, we do a men's steak cook off. And you know, another interesting thing about our events, all of these events you see are always surrounded by soul winning. 
Yeah. So the guys will get together for a state cookout, but we go soul winning, first. then meet at the church. And when the ladies are coming together for their luncheon, the guys are out going soul winning. Mm -hmm. It's well, just the ladies are soul winning back at the luncheon. Yeah, while well, they're <laughs> talking about the Lord, leading people to Christ. So what a blessing. So it's a, it's a good time. You come, you get your steak. We got the grill out there. You tell us how you want that steak cooked and we're doing and just guys being guys. What a blessing. Amen. And I look forward to that each year. And then replacing revival survival because we've changed it to where revival survival is every two years so every other year now uh just because we're getting older we don't know how many more years we can handle <laughs> of eating worms and cockroaches but um so this year on the 2023 calendar if you were looking forward to revival survival maybe you haven't joined us those are the only ones looking forward to it <laughs> you've never gone you're super disappointed <laughs> but we you are have to wait until 2024. Bring a backpack full of food this time. Right. So this year it's going to be family <laughs> backpacking. The same time that the Revival Survival would have been. You, you see the three guys up there? Yeah. That's Greg. That's you. And that's me. Which one's me? Uh, Well, I'm going to say Greg is on the left. Okay. Yeah. Can I be the guy in the middle? I'm like, yeah, you can be. The, <laughs> yeah, you can be the guy. I'll be the guy. But anyway, we're 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 losing our train of thought here. <laughs> we're, revival survival will do that to you. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this is a trip where it's going to be co-ed. Ladies are invited to come, but you're going to have to be able to backpack. It's going to be some hiking. So obviously not little ones unless they want to. Um, but that's on the calendar, and you know we're looking forward. That'll be our first time ever doing yeah. it. So we'll report back on that, and then family camp. Family the, camp. Super fun. How do you describe family camp? Incredible. It's a, a tremendous blessing. Pastor McMurtry uh, has come down every year for it. And last year's, this 2022, there it was revival. Yeah. yeah. It was revival for families, for our church. Nobody wanted to leave. It's, uh, it's not camping like most people think. Now, it's probably a big step for some people. You can bring your tent. They also have some dorms and stuff, but there's showers and there's a cafeteria. The church has air conditioning and there's a, it's a, it can, we get the entire campground. Right. You have, we have a chapel building, a fellowship hall, a full kitchen. Yeah. We have, you know, dorms and bathrooms and basketball courts, but baseball diamonds, you know, there's a pool, there's uh, a, a, there are volleyball courts. We get the whole campground. And we get to uh, just have our own organized activities and do whatever it is that we have planned. We have plan We have games planned throughout the day. Yeah. So we have games for teens, games for adults, games for kids. We have three meals a day. Yeah. It's just a great time. So we cherish our fellowship time at, at our church. Mm -hmm. And if if that's not the case at your church, you need to make an effort to make it makes a huge difference right. in the ministry. And family camp is just one of those opportunities. You know, it's kind of like this. You you have a Wednesday night service and it's hard to get get yourself out, you know, and leave and go home, you know, at a reasonable hour to get enough sleep to get up for work the next day because you don't want to leave. Right. We're having fellowship in the Lord and it just feels so great to have that. And then family camp is just an extended version of that where you have a few days, you take the days off, the family time, the kids spend time together, the church spends time together. We have church service in the morning, church service in the evening. The singing is tremendous, Phenom phenomenal. And you really get an opportunity to get closer to God yeah. in those three days. It's I a, I, I envisioned a family camp one day, and this is beyond what I envisioned as Man. far as just the, the singing, the preaching, the spirit. It is... If if you want to see what revival, what I would imagine revival to look like, right. that's it. Amen. Families uniting, singing, reading their Bibles, or centered around preaching, but we're playing games and having fun. And when it's time to leave, nobody wants to leave. Yeah. I mean, I just remember like, please don't end the singing and yeah. shaking the foundation of the building. Those rafters so loud. Ran. They were ringing. It's awesome. And yeah. What's cool is. Again, we're fellowshipping with like-minded believers. You know, there's not really any lost people out there unless you know, right. Judas among us. But still, soul winning was on our minds. There was what three people yeah. that just wandered into yeah. the camp. Two little, two young teenage boys or something, and then a man. Even after camp was over, there's a man that came in looking for a fishing hole. Right, and just got wandered into the Lord, and, and he came to church afterwards. That yep. testifies to okay. So that that whole three days. The spirit is, it's all centered and geared towards praising God. 
it puts you in the spirit. And when you're in the spirit and you see somebody that you don't know, that somebody walks in, in the spirit, you're going to think, well, I wonder if he's saved. Yeah. Right? I got to reach that guy. Yeah. But yeah. well, let me go find out. Yeah. That's when you're being led yeah. of the spirit. You're walking in the spirit. Not only are you living in the spirit, but you're walking. And it's kind of spirit. funny, too, because you kind of feel for the person that walks into that camp because it's like it's going to be it's a- like piranha because <laughs> I, I saw him and I was heading towards the two kids. And there's literally like I could see like three or four other people. Yeah. And I think Brother Luis was the one that was the closest. Did that the happened time. to me last Saturday <laughs> at the Soul Winning Marathon because I'm sending everybody out. So I'm the last one to go to my spot. And I get excited when I see people walking on the sidewalk. So I'll, I'll leave the door. Uh, you know, of course, if I knock it, I'm going to stay. But if I if I'm in transition, I'm going to leave that door, not knock it. And I'm going to go talk to that person walking. Yep. I did that like three times. And everybody already got mm-hmm. uh, an invite. They were always, and I was like, well, let me just make sure, you know, they not only did they yeah, give an invite, but they asked about salvation. And the guy's like, I, so I asked him, I'm like, hey, but, you know, more important than the invitation to the person that you spoke to, you know, offer to show you the Bible way to heaven. And he was like, oh, yeah, man. He's like, showed me that it's just a gift that Jesus paid for, that Jesus took hey. our place. <laughs> He's like, my whole life, I thought I had to be a good person to earn it, to get there, that it would be a reward. I had no idea it was a gift. I didn't know that Jesus took, he said, took the bullet for me. Mm, Amen. He's like, he's like getting emotional. And I'm like, man, this is awesome. (laughs) I did this guy and and try to invite him to church. And he's like, I was like, I was like, well, did you believe? Do you believe that? And he's like, yeah, man. I was like, so you got saved? And he's like, right now today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's so cool. Speaking of salvations, that leads us to the last event on the calendar that I want to highlight. But please, you know, get that calendar, go on our website, pray for these events. If you can't Amen. come and, you know, you're sitting here and you're listening to this, you know, but if you're still listening to this, you know, that's great. That means you know, you're interested in the work of Revival Baptist Church. Pray for us and Amen. pray that because none of this is happening because it's on the calendar and it's just going to be great. It's going to have to be God blesses them Amen. and God continues to use it and no flesh gets the glory. And Amen. as soon as we start taking the credit, that's when you see the blessings of God. So just pray that God puts a hedge of protection. But the last one I want to highlight is the Christmas caroling, the soul caroling that takes place. Mm. It's Christmas caroling slash soul winning. We call it soul caroling. But it's unlike we've ever I've ever seen. It's phenomenal. The whole church comes together, mm-hmm. and uh, the Christmas caroling this year will be we'll do a teen activity on Friday the fifteenth where the teens will do it, and then Saturday the sixteenth we're going to have the church wide soul caroling, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We come together and we have you know little battery flashlight candles and you know Christmas lights, and we got the, the our. our our book, song books printed out and we walk through there's trumpets and guitars and violins and all kinds of things. And we're just this unscheduled parade yeah. engulfing the entire street, walking yeah. down. Yeah. How many people would you say? 60, 70, oh, yeah. 80. Yeah. But there was so a the, lot of over the last five years. It's grown. Right. You know, and it's at a point right now. We probably where it's, split. <laughs> no, no, no. It's really, really cool mm-hmm. because the group's so big. People are like, they're in wonder. Yeah. Like what's going Traffic on? Traffic stops. Just like yeah. looking. People are getting out of their cars. Parking. People are yeah. coming out of their houses because this is like it's like it's like one of those flash mobs, mm-hmm. <laughs> and people are like in amazement, and they come out with the kids. So let me explain what we do. Yeah, we we have this group and we're just all singing, you know, hark the hair. Well, here's the going down the street, angel trumpets playing, violins. And we have designated soul winners that are going to go two by two and knock on the doors that we're walking past. We don't stop and sing at each house. Right. You know, knock, knock. Hark the hair. And they slam the door. No, it's not. It, what Basically, what we do is we have this big group and we go down, we and we uh, 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 sing the songs. And while we're doing that, we have the soul winners knocking on the door. Hey, they open the door and it's like, hey, we're uh, our group's out here caroling. We're from Revival Baptist Church. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas and then offer to show them the Bible way to heaven. And, you know, some we've had salvations every, yeah, every year. year. It never fails. But even those that are not interested, they'll say, oh, no, thank you. But they'll stay out. They'll leave they the door open. They still get a bit. blessing from the – They bring the whole Christmas. family out. The little kids are sitting there, and they're, you know, running around, twirling while we're singing. Yeah. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Recording it with their phone. Re- everybody's got their yeah. cameras out. This year was special in the fact that this year we what we did was it was all over. 
and salvations were taking place and it was time to get back to church. It was getting late. And so here we go. We're, we're at, we're ready to wrap up. And we got one of our group leaders calls us and says, Hey, can you sing for this family that I'm, I'm witnessing to? They are just now coming out. And so our whole group comes over there and we're singing to this one person, this one family after we already loaded up. So we unload, we get our instruments out, we open up our songbooks and we're singing hard for this one family. The next thing you know, more families are coming out. Yeah. And while we're singing, there were three people in the background getting saved. Yeah. Listening to the gospel. We that's, couldn't and that we couldn't end it. It never wanted to end. A lot of times that's what ends up happening now is the people that come out are the people you don't even have to knock their door. Right. It's the you know, the soul winners are going up to the people that come out and they're the people that are getting saved. And it's 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 awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's on the calendar. Come join us for that. That'd be fun. Just go one time and you'll see you if you're not comfortable you know being in, in singing or knocking doors you'll be so you'll be one of 80 people walking down yeah. you'll just blend right in you can just sit there and sing but you'll walk out feeling like man i just did something for the lord and that's special so our theme closing out this episode i hate to see it come to an end but our theme for the 2023 year is i will praise him amen now, just ask yourself let me read you psalm 148 the bible says praise ye the lord Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord forever. Um, praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his words, his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of his saints, even the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's Amen. my prayer for 2024. Yep. Young and old, women and children, everybody coming out and saying, you know what? I will serve God. I will knock a door for the praise of God. I will sing a special in church for the praise of God. Right. I will memorize Bible verses for the praise Amen. of God. And a mighty army rises up, not afraid of what the world thinks and says, I'll praise him among the heathen. Amen. That's our prayer for, uh, for our 2023 year. Come Amen. join us. Thank you. This has been another episode of the Revival Studios. I will be uh, sending out another one next month. And uh, we just look forward to these episodes in the comments. If you have any questions, uh, make sure you find that link for the for the uh, calendar. But then leave suggestions for our next episode topic. We we do read those comments. Well, they read those comments. I don't. <laughs> um, but they read the comments, and we can uh, have something scheduled that would maybe answer some questions you have. So until next time, God bless. Mm -hmm.